<laughs> Stop it. Arr. Don't you know who you're <laughs> dealing with, matey? What a silly man. Mutiny! You wants to be shark bait, do you? <laughs> Alexa, I feel terrible for keeping you waiting. John. Uh, but you see, there was mutiny on board, so... Uh, Stop. <laughs> uh, you see what I have to put up with. All right, councilman. To the cabin with you! Onward! <laughs> yeah, I can't. Come along, Black Sad. Julie, don't let anyone <laughs> bother us. Honey, will you wait in the boardroom for me, please? But. I'll just be a minute then. I think you've already suffered enough. Okay. And think about where you'd like to have dinner tonight, okay? You see, I'm not going to pay you for solving the case. Wow. I thought you were the kind of man who was true to his word. <laughs> no, it's not that. You'll get every penny we agreed on, and more. But not because you solved the case, but for her. Two days ago, she wanted to end it all. Drop out of college, sell the gym. Too many wounds to heal. But through your incredible work, you managed to heal them. Well, perhaps not completely. It takes time to get over something like this. But at least, thanks to you, Sonia wants to be happy. She has hope. I'm going to help her make Dunn's gym the best in the city. Who would have ever guessed it, huh? I'm happy for her. She's been through a lot, and honestly, I wasn't sure she'd make it. Well, she hasn't just yet, but she will in time. Anyway, back to the case. All those people you confronted. Gil, the German doctor, even Mitchell. Huh. I would have never suspected him. Did they say anything? Why did they do it? Did they mention any accomplices? They did mention a certain surgeon. Surgeon? You have uh, any idea who that could be? I'm sure this comes as no surprise. But it was Angus Mitchell himself. In fact, you gave me the lead by telling me he was a doctor. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'm glad I could help. Uh, although, uh, uh, you see, besides my esteem for Joe and Sonia, this ordeal uh, really hits close to home. I don't follow. How do you mean? Sports are my livelihood. Do you know how many of the athletes involved have a deal with me? How do you know that? What? Oh wait, Sonia told you. Yes, that, that's it. Uh, Sonia told me. That's funny. I never told Sonia. Well then, do you know how many of the athletes involved have a deal with me? I don't really know. I'll tell you. Too many. So far, the papers only talk about bodies down at the docks, and an illegal lab. Not one has mentioned the athletes. But if one word gets out, this agency's future could be on the line. Not to mention Sonia's, and the gym's. Could I ask you to be discreet? Sure, I'll be discreet. For a bonus. Oh, sure. I get it. How much are we talking about? Ten times the agreed amount. Wow. You like to play big. I like that. Anyway, that's it. Julie has your check. Don't forget to claim it. As for your bonus, I'll send it along soon. Don't worry about it. 
Thank you again, Black Sad. I don't know what state Sonya would be in if it weren't for you. I had to act, then and there, or let Thorpe get away with it. Excuse me for not standing. No, I won't excuse you. I know you could stand if you wanted to. I'm sure you've got good intentions, but you're wrong. What makes you think that? I, I'm sure there's an explanation. I know that you are a highly skilled sniper, and I think it was you who shot Randall Lee at the hospital. Have you seen me, Black Sad? How could I possibly do that? According to Spano, the mastermind was a certain surgeon. I thought it was Mitchell, but now I know the truth. A journalist told me. Ring a bell? I hired you to solve this damn case. You think that's what a murderer would do? Only because you thought I'd blame Bobby Yale and drop the case. But as soon as I realized something wasn't right, you sent Randall Lee and Gil to give me a scare. And when all that failed, you ordered Lee to kill me. You're the type that won't open his jaws once he's got his prey, aren't you? I think I've made that clear enough by now. Put yourself in my place for a minute. You're a promising football player just got back from the war, but you're still a nobody. The man you saved kindly opens his house to you, and that man is still undone by his wife's passing. He works all day at his gym, and he drinks himself to sleep at night. So you practically end up raising his daughter. You give her her very first abacus. You encourage her to further her education. You comfort her when she misses her mother and her father. Meanwhile, your sporting career takes off. Life is good. Until one day, out of the blue, an accident cripples you. An old friend, Mitchell, tells you he knows someone who can help you. A German doctor. His drugs take some time to work, but uh, they do wonders. You manage to walk for short bursts at a time, little by little. And those bursts keep getting longer. But the drugs aren't cheap at all. So you have to find a way to pay for them, don't you see? So you started by selling drugs to athletes. Then you decided to start an advertising agency to hire those same athletes. Drugs would help them excel, and you'd get better ad deals. The perfect business model. Your first client, Craig Spano. His career had hit a rough patch, so. He was the guinea pig for your new operation. And yet, when the drug started having serious side effects, you got rid of him. Afraid he would talk, you tried to kill him. That's why he hid. From then on, your business was smooth sailing. You even began to think you were above the law. You thought that you were untouchable. Until Joe Dunn found out, and then, two days before his unfortunate death, he came to see you. That's enough now! You stop it!
Now, I don't know if I'm above the law, but I am sure as hell not beneath it. Do you know how much power I have? The kind of people I eat with every day? I could shoot you right now, and nothing would happen to me. With that gun you keep in your drawer? I'm afraid not. I placed your pistol out of reach, just in case you happen to confirm my suspicions, Iron Arm. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment with the police. <sighs> I won't let anyone wreck my life again. Sonia and I, we deserve a future. You can come in now, Smirnoff. Timothy Wilson Thorpe, drop your weapon. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the state will provide one for you. <laughs> Mr. Thor. Sonia Dunn, you are under arrest for the death of Timothy Wilson Thorpe. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Just shut up. Sonia should never set foot in jail. Black said, don't. You know damn well that Thorpe never would have gone to jail. He would have pulled his strings and the case would have been dismissed for lack of evidence. Or worse, they would have blamed someone else. No, there's no way this could work. How do we hide this? John? I'll put the bullets back in the gun. Thorpe had me at gunpoint, but I was faster. We're doing the right thing, Chief. John, why do I end up getting my hands dirty every time I'm close to you? After everything that had happened, the last thing I was interested in was the fight. Did Yale take drugs before the fight? 
Did Stone let him win? I had done everything in my power for things to go the way my moral compass dictated. Whether anyone would listen to me, that was another story. Because no matter what they tell us, our actions don't always determine our future. As if I even knew what that means. I didn't even know what to think of my performance throughout the case. Did I have a clear conscience? Would I have made the same decisions, given the chance? 